Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Words and Music, where we catch up and hang out with your favourite artists. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Twitch accounts. We love to hear from you and we appreciate your feedback. Today we're excited to welcome our first female artist on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome award-winning Dutch metal band Within Temptations lead vocalist and songwriter Sharon Dan Ardell. Sharon, it's so lovely to have you on the show and welcome. So Sharon, we're actually concert promoters in, in Singapore. Okay. And, um, okay. and we said to ourselves, how can we be a contribution to the fans who are starved for live music? Yes. And how can we be a contribution to the amazing artists coming up with new releases? And so oh, we, cool. Yeah. We, very, very cool initiative. <laughs> yeah. And, and we said, you know, since we're promoters, why don't we, you know, do something and, you know, get, get the fans and the bands connected um, together? Because we have a platform, you know, and we do a lot of rock music. So we said, let's, let's do something to be a contribution. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm happy about it. <laughs> okay. Great, great. Okay, so um, um, I just want to first start off with, um, of course, the COVID situation, the COVID-19. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, so where are you all at um, now in, in Holland? How are you coping? Well, I'm fine. My family's fine. That's the most important for me in, in, in you know, um, first of all, of course. But, um, and coping, yeah, it's it's no fun for anyone, you know, but at least I have a garden. Uh, a lot of people don't even have that. So that I'm able to go outside when it's nice weather instead of being in an apartment where you can only go to the balcony or open a window. So I find myself in a very luxurious position still. So um, I'm not someone who's going to complain about that. But yeah, it's not a situation, of course, that everybody wants, anybody wants to be into uh, in, of course, especially also with work, uh, you know, and, you know, I, I would love to go on tour now it's all postponed the festivals are postponed and we've all been looking forward so much to those uh, performances and and uh, festivals so um yeah it's not a, a nice situation but you know uh, it's for the better good for everyone so uh, yeah we'll better cope huh? <laughs> so you know you talked about the festivals being postponed and um but i i saw that you're going back on tour in september uh yes true yeah so so is that um, already scheduled and going is the tickets on sale uh tickets are on sale but the thing is um we are not allowed to play until september and hopefully there will be uh, a sign from the government that they will say okay uh, eventually you're able to play um at this moment it's very unclear if it will happen eventually the show so it's uh we hope so we've planned it because you also have to plan ahead of course at a certain time you just want to you want to postpone things, of course, and you have to pick a date and you don't know how long this is going to take. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to play in September. If not, we'll have to postpone it again. So fingers crossed it won't happen. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, it's such a nightmare. Even for us here in Singapore, we're just um, sitting and waiting. So right now here yeah. we're on a circuit breaker until yeah. June 1st. Uh, oh, June 1st. Until June 1st, but again, it's you know based on the government's roadmap. Yeah, when, of course. Yeah, you know when we can open and do live shows okay. again. You know, Sharon. One thing I find, um, I don't know whether it's a good or bad thing, but um, this COVID thing has kind of um, made us go back into the minimalist way of living. In a way, I do. I, you know what I think is most important that I think we hopefully have learned after this is that we maybe look a little bit different how we go about our environment and also how we um, produce uh, products you know, also for fashion. And, and uh, that's something that maybe a lot of people will finally start realizing and maybe um, start changing the way they do traditionally the things, but they will change it for the better for the future for everyone. Absolutely. You know, um, on May 8th, um, I came across, um, you know, your single, uh, yeah. <laughs> Entertain You. I must say, mm -hmm. when I first heard the song, I was completely hooked. Oh, cool. <laughs> I was completely hooked. I was, you know, the whole, uh, the intensity of the song, 
you know, the lyrics, it was very powerful. Um, maybe, you know, explain how did the process of writing that, that um, song came about? Our previous album has just only been released last year. So uh, when we were planning to do this tour with Evanescence, we felt like, okay, we've been done a very extensive tour. So we felt like we need to write some new songs and um, to give something new to the fans when we, do, when we do start playing again so much and also for the festivals. And um, we wrote um, um, some new songs in November. We recorded it in February already. And then we did the video and everything, and everything was shut down and a week later. <laughs> so we got everything in time, luckily. And uh, so we were, uh, that was the reason why we actually already started writing again. And um, the song itself is more about society, you know, it's like how we treat certain people in our society. You know, the urge to satisfy our personal needs to uh, feel good about ourselves by pointing at other people who don't really fit in um, the majority of society. And without deviation from the norm, there's no progress possible. I think that's the best quote ever that really explains what this song is about. I saw that, you know, the song went to number one you know, on many of the, you know, the rock charts, you know. Yeah, they went, yeah exactly. The, the, yeah, the, 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 the streaming platforms, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, it's... yeah, we were, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I also, the other thing I wanted to bring up was the artwork um, for the single. Yes. So, so um, Sharon, did you come up with the, what's the process? Did you come up with the idea for the artwork? Well, we came across the boy, and we um, and we felt like you know this this image with also with the with, with the, the the skull paint on his face. Uh, we felt like um, we also made like this filter for fans for for you know um, fans to when they go to our Instagram account, they can find the filter and they can put it also on their own picture while photographing themselves. It's like, you know, identifying yourself with this person and the, and the, and the idea behind the, the artwork was like that a lot of people are, you know, especially when you're as young as the kid on the, on the, on the, on the cover, he's trying to find his own identity. And a lot of people are trying to find their identity when they're teenagers and, uh, and not always it's embraced with love or, underst or understanding which direction they want to experiment to. And that's a little bit what we want to represent with the cover of the, of the, of the single. I understand that you formed the band in 1996. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm very curious to, to know who were your influences, um, you know, before starting the band or who, who were you listening to, you know? I was listening to a lot of stuff. I grew up with parents who were always listening to all kinds of music. So from an early age, I heard from Deep Purple to uh, uh, Eagles to Santana to uh, Chris Ria, all kinds of stuff. And I loved it all. And um, so but what really inspired me uh, eventually to uh, uh, start with, with music, I came across Robert and uh, um, I was always a grunge girl. And he introduced me to the band The Circle, which was a band before we did station with exactly the same kind of music. They started at the beginning of the 90s. And um, it was like eth uh, uh, ethereal kind of vocals. Uh, for me, the inspiration was especially like Dead Can Dance, uh, Enya, Clanet, you know, all the Celtic stuff. I was really into that. And um, and Tori Amos was a big inspiration for me as well. I don't know how she writes songs and how she sings, and but especially also how she writes mu the lyrics for music. It was really an eye opener. So that those kind of influences were for me very important at the time. But for the guys, it was more Marillion and Metallica, but also, uh, you know, we came from the death metal scene at the time, uh, at least the band before with Invitation, The Circle, and they tried to, uh, to implement, you know, all the melody again, because at a certain time with death metal, you can go heavier than heavy, of course, it was with certain bands, they achieved that. And uh, Robert said, like, okay, I wanted to implement something which is more melodic. So he wanted to have female vocals in there together with the grunts. And that was the picture he had at the time. Now, being a woman uh, in the metal world, what can you say about yeah. the evolution of women in metal? 
Well, I think it has changed a lot, of course, especially the last 25 years. I think uh, also when you saw a lot of women um, uh, starting bands as a vocalist or uh, maybe as guitarists, um, I saw, saw a lot of um, examples before that even. Uh, you had Candy Dolfer who played, she's a Dutch girl, the saxophone with Prince. And you had, of course, I think it was Sheila E behind the drums, but also with Prince. So for me, there were a lot of girls already in music a music that I liked a lot. So I liked Prince as well. And so it was for me, like the girls were already there. And, uh, but it also helped me, I think, eventually to think about, okay, you know, I never saw any restrictions and why not to do this? So for me, when I started as a 14 year old um, to be in a band, playing covers <laughs> for many years until I met Robert and I wanted, to, I wanted to make my own music and I ran into him and uh, so we started uh, eventually of course with invitation later on but um, yeah that was for me uh, very important uh, that, to see that there were girls and I think um, with Put Invitation, a lot of other bands were there as well at the same time, more or less, who started with a lot of girl singers actually and I think eventually that also helped uh, to uh, plant a seed in in little girls' minds of like, okay, maybe I can do this as well, and maybe I can play guitar, or maybe bass, or and whatever I like. And that's what you need. You need examples, I think. And um, I'm glad I had uh, those examples as well. Definitely, Sharon. Definitely, it's very true. It's um. Now, do you think that uh, female artists are treated different differently in music? Um, well, I think that sometimes there is someone in a record company behind a desk thinking how people think uh, people want to, uh, you know, represent women in music. And I think it's a lot of time outdated. You know, once we went on tour uh, with Lacuna Coil from Italy to America, we had the South American tour and it was called the hottest chicks of metal. You know, there will never be the hottest man in metal you know it's like it's somebody behind the desk who thought that was pretty cool to say you know i don't know sex sells i know it does but it's you know it's not the best way to represent us females you know in music because it just yeah it's it's a wrong way to start you know <laughs> uh, when was that when was that uh, pairing what year was that? uh this was uh this was in 2007 i think wow okay yes yeah and, not uh, that long ago. <laughs> yes, not that long ago. Um, I, I was curious to find out, you know, when you're coming up with these pairing and touring uh, co-headliners, how, how does the process start? Like, who initiates who tours and who who tours with who, with, with each other? Like, you know... Well, look, what, yeah, yeah it's it just sometimes it's bookers, you know, like they just want to make a package and then it's represented to the bands. Most of the time, that's how it goes. And then the bands tell if they want to play with that band or not, if they feel it or, you know, the only only one who decides eventually is a band itself because they really feel like, OK, this is a match or it's not a match. And, um, you know, so far we have been very lucky to be uh, playing with a lot of cool bands, uh, in, you know, like Lacuna Coil, In Flames. And now we're going to play with Evanescence. We, yeah, so it's, it's, it's uh, we had nice packages. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And you get, uh, yeah, you get friends all over the world as well. Nice, nice. And um, who do you foresee yourself pairing up in the future? Any? Um... I don't know. You know, we have so many still in, in uh, scheduled. We have, we're going to play with uh, Iron Maiden a few shows in Europe um, as a special guest. And we're, we're looking forward to that because we are uh, enormous, uh, enormous um, fan of uh, Iron Maiden as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And we played a, a few times for Metallica as well. So those things are like a dream come true as of course, when you think of us when we were young, you know, like, oh my God, if you could ever play with them and, and then it happened. So <laughs> those things are very, you know, meeting your heroes and that's really cool. I wanted to ask you, um, Sharon, you know, being a female, um, how does a woman take care of herself in such grueling schedules, flights, you know, uh, load ins, um, uh, wake up calls, rehearsals, sound check, the list goes on. You know, for women, we just, we have to do our hair, <laughs> we have to get our makeup, we have to prep, you know, there's so much dynamics. I mean, how, how do you, um, how do you take care of yourself? Yeah, well, I've, the most important is to find, whenever you can, to sleep. 
because that's because otherwise you can't handle the pressure and that's, that's also especially when it's a, he a hectic schedule nowadays we have the luxury to, we take the luxury of planning it more relaxed for ourselves that we have like days in between that we can recover you know and um in the past we couldn't we had to go on and on and on but then you're way younger <laughs> And then it's much easier, uh, but it's, it's nice. Also, we have the luxury of not having to do that heavy schedule, and so we won't. It's like taking your time and to to make it enjoyable. Otherwise, you burn out so easily. You know, you need to find this is the most beautiful job in the world for me. And if I want to maintain it for a long time, I need to take care of myself, not just me, but everybody in the band, also the guys. And you see that we need our, you know, it's very boring, not very rock and roll, but you need your sleep, you need your vitamins, you need, you know, you need to have a break in between. Otherwise, you just, it just burns you out. Yeah, because a lot of, you know, the, the audience always think, oh, it's a rock and roll lifestyle. You know, after the show is just fun and yeah, fun. Yeah, it is in a way, sometimes, but a lot of times, a lot of waiting, very boring. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how do you prepare yourself before a performance? What What do you do for, for, for Sharon? What does Sharon do? Uh, well, what I need is um, I need to, especially a room for myself. That's I'm really I'm not a diva, but you know the guys are sharing one room because they really enjoy being in each other's company, and I it's too much for me. I just ha I really need to focus. Otherwise, I'm too nervous. I'm a very nervous person before I go on stage, and the guys always need to remind me, Sharon, this is the thing you wanted to do all your life. So why are you so nervous? Enjoy it. But you know they're very they're really cool guys, and I love them to death. But it's I need as my space before, so that's very important. And I need my ginger to make my own fresh ginger tea, which is very good for my vocal cords to warm up. I bring my makeup artist with me, and together we prepare myself before the show, I start singing already and she does my hair so I don't have to think about it, which is a luxury I love. <laughs> those kind of things are very nice. It's so important because, you know, once you've got, you know, those things taken care of, yeah. you can focus. Absolutely. You don't have to think, no, you just can go on stage like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> exactly. You know, but one of the things I've been, you know, seeing all your images, your pictures, your videos, I love the clothes. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, can you tell us, do you design the clothes yourself? Do you have a, a designer? Do you work with the well, designer? I, I, I really have a good idea of what I want always, and I've always had that. In the, in the beginning, I would rent clothes or buy clothes myself and then alter them. And eventually I started working with several designers in the past and still am. Uh, nowadays I work with Jan Bulo. He's a Dutch, young Dutch designer, and um, I like his style of of of, uh, of clothes and, and his collection a lot of times. But we always make something special for me because I always have my own idea and I know what shape suits me best and also what freedom I need on stage because uh, the other artists he does as well are very different. They're in jazz or in our DJs or and I'm you know I have to, I have to move on stage so I want to run and so it's very different for everyone and I really have my own personal taste of what I like to see and together we make something new and we design together and I I really uh, yeah I love him very much because he's very because not everybody wants to work like that and I'm I'm happy that he's open for that and. Still, it's very much his print on every dress because it's also very much his style. So it's nice that we can work because we have together because we have the same kind of taste for for clothing. That's uh, amazing. Yes, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, because the clothes. I mean, the clothes. You know, it's such an important um, presentation because everybody's, especially for yourself, Sharon. Everybody's just looking at you. Yeah, well, no, the guys as well, of course, but they all get dressed by Jan Bula, and that's more of his uh, more uh, normal, li you know, line of uh, of collection. And um, but we try to really make also a style that 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 looks good on everyone, on all the band members as well. So to have one. Oh, fantastic! Okay, I I wanted to ask you: Have you heard anything um, about Singapore or Asia? Well, I've been there once years ago, uh, but it was because I've lived in Indonesia for a long time as a kid uh, for my parents' work. And we had always a stop through Singapore. And there was one time that we had one day in Singapore. 
<laughs> and uh, I remember that everything was so clean on the streets. So it was, and I think I was only really uh, in in you know downtown in 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 your in your capital. And uh, so it was, um, yeah. But I do remember it because it was a uh, yeah. It was just a very uh, spectacular day. We did a lot of f fun things. So, um, but it was a really long time ago. I think I was at least eight years old or something, seven maybe. So yeah, but I yeah, it's a country which is on my list. As soon as we can fly again, mm -hmm. who knows? It might come your way again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be great. And how yes. how long were you um, living in Indonesia? For at least five years. And when I was sixteen, I went back again to uh, well to rediscover the country again because my father was there again for another project, and he was there for I think a year again. And I came over for Easter and visit some friends that were still living there and um i went to bali also because um i don't know if, um, there's there some people uh, fans of, of mine they think i dance a little strange on on stage but it has to do with bali because the fact you have the the bali dancers they're like with him the hands i do this on stage sometimes and it's because it comes natural to me i never thought of it but after looking back on it i think it was because of the fact i lived there and i saw these Ballet dance, belly dancers, um, uh, Bali dancers, I mean, uh, dancing with their hands this often. It was so gracious, and I loved it so much. I somehow, it just got into my system somehow. I think so. That's <laughs> yeah. So Bali for five years. So did you enjoy all the wonderful Indonesian cuisine? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the rambutans, I don't know if it's also, uh, 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 that's a Dutch word to say, but I'm not sure if it's international word, but uh, I love those. We had a tree and uh, we had someone who would always take them for me down and I, would, oh, I could eat the whole day from those. It was lovely. And um, yeah, no, I love the country. I love the, the nature, um, going to the rice fields and uh, uh, horse on horseback and then enjoying the view and those kind of things yeah i loved i loved it over there it was really nice climate and lovely people very lovely people oh nice wow I, it's gonna be um a real treat for um the fans you know to know that uh, yeah i didn't know that no, so no, a lot of people. No, no, not everybody knows. I've lived in. Some people know that I've lived in Indonesia, but they don't know for how long and where. I, li I lived in Jakarta, so yes. We've got some fan questions, actually, Sharon. Okay, so we have a question from uh, Afik, and he says, um, "Dear Sharon, what advice do you have for an aspiring musician who hopes to be successful in the music industry?" I give the same answer to everyone because I had this question, of course, before. And the thing I think is most important is uh, identity. You have to give your own identity to music. And that means like bring something new to the table. You know, there are so many bands who sound the same, who look the same and not just to be different, but something that's close to you. That's really you add something original and uh, especially in the music of course the rest is also important but especially in the music and then you you will stand out from the crowd and that's the best advice i can give you it's like find that unique part of yourself that you can put in your music a question from pat um she wants to know do you have tips on how to start writing songs or music for expiring artists what i always do is i listen a lot to music before i start uh, writing music and it has to do with that I want to come in a certain atmosphere of, uh, of inspiration and always what comes out is always a lot different than what I've been listening to. But it, to me, I was like, oh, my God, I've written for the second time this Beatles song. Oh, no, no, I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> and then it's like, OK, you, you, you've taken the emotion of a certain song you loved so much, but it's a completely different song. And that, that's very important. So let yourself be inspired by well, everything that 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 um, gives you a certain kind of emotion, and eventually it will be something from you, because it's always like uh, the thing that you feel and you hear are something, and what you eventually make is something totally different always. So uh, that's uh, hopefully a good tip for you guys. I wanted to find out: um, Do you have any plans for collaborations in the future, um, like on the albums? Yeah, no, 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 no. Because uh, the thing is, what we always do is like we've only written, uh, well, we've only recorded two songs, and we've um, 
actually written a lot of demos so a lot of songs are in the making but and if there will be a collaboration we only know if we feel that something is missing in the song or maybe we think some uh, certain specific uh, singer will add really something beautiful to it because it will get even better from it so those kind of things if the song needs it then we'll ask somebody and that's still not uh, at this moment we don't have that kind of song yet so maybe i don't know <laughs> the future will tell we have a question uh from sharon with events cancelled due to the pandemic artists and musicians are struggling to be creative in isolation do you have any words of comfort for them during this tough time yeah well i just hope you know i think the music probably will give them some comfort and um yeah, words of comfort, just uh, hang in there and everything that's frustrating you, if you put it in the music, you know, and uh, eventually something beautiful will come out of it and productive, it will be productive. <laughs> yeah, let your emotions speak. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed today's session with Sharon Dan Ardell from Within Temptation. Yeah.